اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله I seek refuge from the evils of Satan and I begin in the name of God Almighty the most gracious the most merciful I bear witness and testify to the fact that there is but one and only one God Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Lord of the worlds and I bear witness and testify to the fact that Muhammad on whom be peace that he is the messenger of Allah this is your presentation of the electric mosques teachings of Islam striving to bring Islam into your homes into the corners of Guyana and even to the world using digital technology YouTube Facebook and so on my dearest brothers and sisters of Islam and of humanity and the fraternity of religions and the concourse of humanity we have with us here a guest for some minutes a very wonderful gentleman that I have met highly intellectual simple but very powerful and extremely articulate I wish to introduce him to sit with me here for a few minutes to discuss the concept of Islam to his understanding and the reason for this is that for many years now, several decades, he was converted to this religion. He converted to the religion because he was amazed at the concept of Allah, the oneness of God and so forth. But I want us to listen to him, what really moved his heart. I was very inspired with his style of talking and his love for Islam. I must state at this time that some of you might have heard that my daughter Latif and Roshina whom you have known here as a little kid growing up for many years with me partnering on the teachings of Islam that she is now grown up she has now married and she is married to the son of the same gentleman his name is uh, Fenton brother Fenton Jagannath he's Fenton Ali Jagannath and his son is Damien Ali Jagannath, married to my daughter now very recently. So we are actually family. Some of you might have been here for that wedding, and some of you might see portions of it later on on television as we move on. But for now, I'm going to invite this gentleman to sit with me as we articulate on the concept of Allah and the concept of Islam. Brother Jagannath, would you please come and join me here on the electric mosque's presentation of the teachings of Islam. This is Brother Fenton Jagannath, originally from the Old Boys Town area, now living in New York City. He is here for the wedding and marriage of his son as our honored guest to my daughter whom you know and whose name is Latifun Rushina Khan. Brother Jagannath, I want to welcome you to the Electric Mosque. Thank you so much, Brother Rushina. Um, it is a joy having you as part of our family and also as a guest here on the Electric Mosque teachings of Islam. Um, I heard you articulate on the religion um, and I was very impressed and so I invited you to be a guest here today so I would I'd like to ask you to speak to us on what is it that moves you in Islam the concept the thought the, the philosophies whatever it is for a few minutes and periodically I may or I may not come in to give you a support uh, on what you're saying so please, you are the guest of my of my guests <laughs> of, of the Electric Mass Teachings of Islam, and you are now going nationwide and even internationally by YouTube and Facebook. So speak to the people. Okay, thank you, Brother Roshan. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. 
first of all, I want to keep this exposition of mine today very simple and let the focus be on Muslim converts, non-practicing Muslims, and non-Muslims. And I specifically want to do this for this group of people instead of the practicing Muslims, for them to understand what are the concepts in Islam that will offer them solutions in their daily life. First of all, I must say that Islam has encompassed so much that it will offer you a social and moral guidance and as you grow in your faith, you will grow in your spiritual well-being. The two main subjects I'll talk about today, it's the concept of God. All religions exhort you to worshiping. Man, by his very nature, was created to worship. What he worships will make all the difference in the strength of his faith. First of all, some people worship material things, and some people worship several gods. But it doesn't matter which religion you belong to. Islam has explained that this whatever religion you belong to, as long as you have that concept of the oneness of God, you believe in the day of judgment, you will have your reward. So, my brothers and sisters, even if you are a non-Muslim, all hope is not lost for you. Because the word Muslim means a true believer in the oneness of God, and you have to follow that up with believing in all of the prophets that God has sent to us for the guidance of mankind. The greatness of God is so compassionate that He didn't leave us in ignorance, but sent guidance by way of all the prophets so that we all can have that well-being in our life. So, as you understand it, Worshipping means you have to prayer. Without prayer, you'll be hopeless. And if you associate anything with the Supreme Being, there is only one indivisible Creator. His concept of Him will make you, again, very strong in whatever you believe. So do not associate any creations, like the moon or the stars or the sun, Anything that comes to your mind that you think you want to worship other than the, the Creator who has given you life and understanding. My brother, you touched on some very beautiful and amazing point, points um, on the, the concept of Islam and the oneness of God in a very beautiful and well articulated manner. I'm so very impressed. Um, what was it that uh, moved you in the early stages? I made understand you, you accepted Islam at a very early age, which might, might have been in your teens. But what was it that, that moved you to, to this? Can you articulate on that? Well, in my early teens, I attended a Catholic school. I grew up in Christian background. Not a lot of my relatives are, but for me, I'm not criticizing any other religion, but for me, Islam, as I said early on, it offered that social, moral, and spiritual guidance, and it did, it did not make you disassociate yourself or to annihilate another religion because you are a Muslim. There's, there's hope for everyone, even there's one who's a non-Muslim. And for me, there's like some other concepts teaches you you're born with original sin and there's only one way out. The concept Islam has always offered you is very simplistic, but you have to understand it. It does not propagate violence but peace. Unlike what you're seeing in the world today, you have to very be, be very careful to distinguish the difference 
between what it teaches and what mankind practices. And because mankind has the power to choose, God has given him that power to choose, we often sometimes choose a different path than what God has set for us to choose. You, you, you mentioned about um, this oneness of God. And it is a very serious um, injunction by Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that we must not associate any partner to God Almighty. And this is where a lot of misunderstanding and misconception happens. Indeed, you said that Islam does not attack, make mockery, nor denigrate any other religion. But it, it, it appeals to the heart, heart of man, to his rational power of thought and thinking. The, the foundation of the religion of Islam is the Surah Al-Ikhlas. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of God Almighty, the most gracious, the most merciful, say, He, Allah, God Almighty, is one. The eternal, the absolute. He beget not, nor is he begotten. And there is none like unto him. This is the concept of the foundation of Islam. This is exactly what you are saying. But also, Islam believes in harmony, as you touched on, very beautiful, peace and love for all religions and all humanity, and in no compulsion. You also touched on that. There's no compulsion in religion. That's right. The Quran says, like Ikra Fideen, that there is no compulsion in religion. So what is the use you force a man into a faith, and the next thing, he curses you. Allah has asked you that question. You must not force a man. And then it goes on to say, if a man really wants to hold his faith, that he will also have some reward. He will also for the good things that he do. Quran 2, 262 says, Be you a Muslim, a Jew, a Christian, or a Savior. Savior means all those other people who receive revelations. Once you believe in God Almighty, once you do good works and you accept the judgment, then you shall receive your reward from God Almighty. So all that you are saying shows that you have studied Quran very in-depthly and you understand this religion very well because the Quran also go. Quran 262. Mankind is a single nation. This is a, some of the things that we some of our Muslim brothers who are supposed to be our leaders in the Middle East and so on, don't seem to understand. And this is why they created these conflict, conflicts and these uh, um, embarrassing situations at times for Islam and even for the entire nation of the religion of Islam by committing atrocities that is not relative to the religion of Islam because Islam means peace, it enhances peace, and it believe in live and let live. But even if a nation is a so-called, let us say, Islamic nation, the people in that nation must be allowed to enjoy their lives once they pay their taxes, and once they, they, they help in the defense of the nation, and so forth, they are, have a right, like every other citizen, to partake in the development of the nation, in personal development and economic activity and so on. So, you have made some very beautiful points here and I very much appreciate uh, all that you have said. I would like to know if there is anything else you'd like to bring up or any question you'd like to raise or to dilate on. Well, it states very clearly in the Quran that God, even for non-believers, has granted them respite until that day of judgment. And he, in His eternal power and knowledge, has granted it respite to in this lifetime, who are we to overawe a non-believer by force? We have no such right, because God has not bestowed that on us. So we, as a single human species, we should try to practice more tolerance of another religion, and not to propagate your religion as the very best, but to educate people, to let them understand like God has done for mankind, He's giving you choices. You can choose or you don't, the right, the right way or the wrong way. 
And if you are exposed to the right knowledge and the right mentorship of understanding concepts, then you will make for sure a better judgment. So my friend, I thank you for sitting with me and for being my relative now. It's He's now what we call in the Indian culture, Sandhi. Uh, right? Thank you Sandhi. so much. <laughs> He's my Sandhi and my brother. And uh, we love each other. We share the same values. We share the same religion of faith. But we also say here the same love and harmony for all peoples, for all humanity, for all ethnicities, and for all religions. Harmony and love for the entire world. So I thank you for having been my guest, and we shall do this some other time. Okay. Please thank sit you. and enjoy the electric mosque teachings of Islam, and you can say salam to the people. Salam. Salam, everybody. Thank you very much, Brother Rusha. Thank you. What an absolutely amazing discussion. I'm sure many of you enjoyed it. And if you realize, neither of us has called upon you to come and join the religion of Islam. As a matter of fact, I feel that the time has come where I do no longer invite people to join Islam. If I wish for people to join this magnificent and appreciate great religion, I have to live the life of a good Muslim. I have to live the life of an example. I'm not to try to compel people by evangelical techniques and trickery or so to come to join my religion. It must be because of the things I do, of the life I live, and then if you come to me for Islam and to accept the faith, I will give you the conversion by God Almighty. But I will never coerce you or insist upon you or try to manipulate you with some food or some clothes or any form of trickery. So my brothers and sisters, the gentlemen, I wish to thank you, Brother Fenton Ali Juggernaut. The Holy Quran also, as I'm on this mode of peace and harmony and love and oneness of God, I might as well complete the program on the very same topic. The Holy Quran tells us, O people of the book, some translations put it, O people of the world, the people of the book are people of the world because all nations receive revelation. Islam, the Arabic, People, the Arabian people were the last to receive a revelation. O oh, people of the world, O oh, people of the book, let us come to an equitable proposition as between you and us that we worship one God and we comprise one common brotherhood. What an amazing, what an amazing charter for universal love and peace and harmony from the one true God, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the world. That's what it means, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Lord, my brothers and sisters, of the world, the charter of goodwill, peace and harmony. All nations receive revelation. And I believe the revelation came in a certain manner to suit their customs, their traditions, and so forth. And there will be some varying differences but not when it comes to the concept of faith to the oneness of God, for example. You will know of the American Indians, they call Native Americans, who worship the great grandfather or the great spirit. What is the great spirit but Allah? The amazing religion of Sanatan Dharm and the Arya Samaj, they believe in the old. The one universal God whose concept is very Similar to Allah, if there's any difference, uh, it's very, very minuscule. Om, which is the worship of the one universal God. The Jews, even the great mystical master Jesus Christ, worship the Elohim, the Yahweh. The Yahweh from which comes an attribute of Jehovah. But he worshiped Elohim, Yahweh. And then some people made it into Jehovah, which is just an attribute. So even Jesus Christ worshipped the Creator, Lord of the world, our Father. 
He never said him, you know. He said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so forth and so forth. You all know it. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. He's, Jesus is talking about the big boss, the Lord God that he worship, the power of the glory forever and ever. So all the religions from all the, the tribal denominations in India and Africa and Japan and in China, God Almighty sent prophets and messengers, for example, Confucius was a great world prophet and a man of peace who came to teach harmony and universal love to mankind through the, Jew, through, through the Chinese nation. We just spoke about La Ikrafidin. There is no compulsion in religion. If we don't remember anything here, brother, brothers and sisters of Islam and the fraternity of religions, the brother said, who my guest, brother, brother Ali Fenton, Juggernaut, that there is no compulsion in religion. La ikra fideen. Remember that. Even if you are, even if you are, when they talk about ISIS and the madness that's going on in those countries, but due to due to evil penetration and unnecessary war that was unleashed and the breakup of nations, these uh, infidels raised with their fanaticism. But they're wrong. And they can't force anybody to accept Islam. They have to accept it from within the heart of Prophet Muhammad said. I come not to open up the chest to see what is written in the hearts of man. That is what he said to Osama when Osama killed somebody even though he said La ilaha illallah in a war that was taking place and the heat of it. He didn't conspire to kill the man but the heat of it. But Muhammad said, Prophet Muhammad al be said, I did not come to open up the chests of anyone. If a man says he believed then he believed and that was in a case of war. And tell my servants that they should speak in a most kindly manner unto those who do not share their beliefs. Quran 17, 53. Allah is telling us the Muslims to speak beautiful, exhort with a, with a beautiful voice, exhort with them a goodly exhortation, speak in a beautiful language, the Quran is saying. Do not criticize and make unnecessary mockery and hurt people of all of it or try to have debates to create disharmony and annoyance but debate debates of intelligence and debates of wisdom because Islam is a religion of rationality Islam is a religion of love and harmony and we must not go out of our way to hurt anybody even in the discussion except if you are having uh, an intellectual debate of friendliness and joy and so O Prophet 8221 here is what Allah is teaching the Prophet how to speak and so, O Prophet, exhort them. Your task is only to exhort. You can't compel them to believe. ISIS is wrong. The mad people in Libya who are now attacking each other and the non-Muslims and in Iraq and in Syria, they are wrong. Quran 8821. The prophet Subhanahu wa is teaching them, are they mad at these people? Here is what Allah says, I repeat for emphasis. And so, O Prophet, exhort them. Your task only is to exhort, teach. So your task only is to teach. You cannot compel them to believe the words of Subhanahu wa ta'ala in 821. Take down these numbers. 2256. 1682. 1753 252 8821 now 532 hear this when it comes to peace and love for humanity 532 of the holy and the glorious Quran Allah's gift to mankind Allah's gift to humanity my brothers and sisters may you have a healing Remember, Quran tells us, in Allah does heart rest best. I repeat, 
in Allah those hearts rest best. So listen with a pure heart. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. If anyone killed a person, it would be as if he killed all humankind. If anyone killed an innocent person, it would be as if he has killed all of mankind. And if anyone saved a life, it would be as if he saved the life of all mankind. It doesn't say Muslim if he saved a Muslim life or if he take a Muslim life, if he killed a person, anybody, an innocent person, this is the grandeur, the magnificent, the blessing of the religion of Islam, my beloved and most divine brothers and sisters of humanity listening to this. The Electric Mosque's presentation of the teachings of Islam, I ask Allah to send his power and his blessings into my hands I, as I send peace and harmony into your hearts for a healing if you are troubled spiritually, physically, by bad dreams, demons, personal troubles, finances or whatever, may God Almighty heal you with a mighty healing and I move on. Chapter 49 verse 13 the constitution of Islam, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in the name of God Almighty, the most gracious, the most merciful, O mankind. We created you from a male and a female, and made you into nations and tribes that you may know and honor each other, not that you may despise each other. Indeed, the most honorable of you in the sight of God is the most righteous. The most righteous. Muhammad in his last sermon said, the Arab is not greater than the non-Arab. He know they will suffer with pride as they are doing today. The white is not greater than the black. Nor is the black written in the white. That is why he had governors and caliphs made of African people as leaders of the nation of Islam that he had established in the known world at that time. God does not forbid you to be kind and equitable to those who have neither fought against your faith nor driven you out of your homes. In fact, God loves the equitable always be just, especially when people have not hurt you. You should do nothing to hurt them. Chapter 60, verse 8. Be quick in the race for forgiveness. Chapter 133, 134. My operator is upon you. And upon me, she wants me to wrap up at this time. And therefore, I take the opportunity, brothers and sisters, from the Electric Mask Presentations of Islam, from our guest, the wonderful, brilliant Fenton Ali Juggernaut, and from our family who manages the Electric Mask Presentations of Islam, to wish one and all Assalamu Alaikum and a healing and a mighty healing from God Almighty. May the peace and the mercies and the blessings of Subhanahu wa Ta'ala be with one and all. I thank you. Assalamu alaikum.